Welcome to the Visualizing Business Model series. This video is going to be about a business model called the chat. And in it, I'm going to talk about and show you how to apply the chat framework to your business. I'm going to start off talking about business models in general. Then I'll speak about the chat business model framework. And then finally, we'll get into understanding each of the seven aspects of the chat business model. So let's get into it. If you're new to my channel, please do me a solid and click the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and every time we upload content, you'll get notified. What is a business model? That's the easy part. There's a lot of definitions that seem fairly straightforward. The one I will use is the following. It's a company's production design. At its core, it's an explanation of how you will produce valuable products and services. Peter Drucker says, a business model is supposed to answer who your customer is, what value you can create or add for the customer, and how you can do that at reasonable costs. For this business model series, I will look at how you can represent a business model on paper for your business. The more business model representations that you can complete, the easier it is for you to understand your company's value and in turn, how to tell the next person what it is that you do, especially useful for potential investors. The representation in this class is called the Activity Theory Framework or CHAT. An activity theory framework is a diagram that explains what activities you perform in order to produce value. It is easily identified by drawing one big triangle and then slicing that up into four smaller triangles. Chat comes from contributions by authors Vygotsky, Leontiev, and Engelstrom. They built it to analyze the relationship between the human mind, which is what people think and feel, and activity, which is what people do. Activity is what happens when human beings operate on their environment in order to satisfy a need. The purpose for us is to understand how to conceptualize and act on the business to satisfy a customer's needs. So in its abstract form, our chat as a business model looks like this. There is a subject who we expect to act on the object and the object produces the outcome. The subject has a differentiator and the subject is aware of the barriers to entry to their industry and they produce the outcome on behalf of the customer and they perform some specific key activities in order to produce the outcome. So let's populate it. First thing that we'll do Let's talk about the subject. There are some basic groupings that make up a business and these go under this heading subject and this is where you can list them. Avoid making an organogram. Just list the basic functions as represented in your mind by the people that you have or that you'll be starting the business with. This is not an organogram. Another good source of information for the people is what you had in your business model canvas if you've drawn that up already. Key partners is a good source for people that might be in your organization. And key activities will give you an idea of the people that you'll need at a minimum. Keep it light as possible. We'll come back and try and shorten this list later. This is the company. The subject acts on the object and that's what we'll be focusing on next. When you think about object, think about an environment. You will act on an object to produce value. This, at its most basic, is your assets. These are the things that you have bought to produce value. It is not something that you make. You must have bought it or are allowed to use it if it's a shared resource. Back to your business model canvas. If you've done it, this will be under your key resources section. Assets are the means of production with which, without, you cannot satisfy the customer's needs. 
you use all of these objects to produce the outcome. And this is the motive. This is your products and services and is really the guts of what your business produces. This section must speak directly to your customer's needs. So as the subject, you are now acting on the object and what makes you different from Joe Soap next door who's also trying to produce the same outcome. That takes us to the top of the triangle and here is where we put down the differentiator. This is your niche. What do you infuse into everything that you make? This section is about your secret source. You will also find this section in your business model canvas under the heading differentiator. So now you are acting on the object to produce the outcome using your differentiator and it's all about the customer. So bottom of the triangle, that's the section that we go next to. The customer can also be seen more as the community and the person that I usually try and make sure that you list here is the actual user. Now most times the user is the payer but sometimes it's not. Take an example like a medical aid where your child is the user of the medical aid but you are the payer of it. So in this section what we're trying to do is list all of the people that derive value from your product and usually easy way is the people that buy or pay a premium for it. At a point later on in your business, you are going to try and value the value that you produce and the barriers to entry are what will help you extract the most value from your customers. And we represent that on the bottom left of our triangle. The more barriers you have, the better it is because it allows you to set a profitable price. Porter's Five Forces is probably a reminder that I'd like to throw in here. Regulations are usually the easiest barriers to entry to identify. So if there are regulations that govern your business, start there. The final aspect of the chat framework, the bottom right triangle, is where we focus on next. And here, we list the key activities that you need to perform to produce the value that you stated in the outcome. This is really a division of labor. So it is usually broken up into the types of people that you have listed under the subject. And there you have it. So pulling it all together, that's the chat. Your business through an activity theory framework lens. So let's take a look at an example that will help us maybe ground our understanding of the chat. And I'd like to do that using an example um, of Skillshare. You might be watching this video on a place called Skillshare. Well, the subject in Skillshare would be a Skillshare teacher and they would be acting on the Skillshare portal. They haven't bought the portal. It is something that they use as a shared resource to produce a premium class. And a premium class is different from a normal class because it earns money. And as a Skillshare teacher, they will bring in their differentiator, which is their killer editing skills, um, a deep mesmerizing voice maybe, and an approachable demeanor as you listen to them, if they, you think they, they sound approachable. And the barrier to entry that they would like to uh, exploit here, because not everybody can be a Skillshare teacher, is bringing in their subject expert knowledge which will separate them as well from the herd. They'll bring in their field experience so they don't just sound like somebody who's regurgitating theory. They sound like people who've done it. And of course, the last barrier to entry is not just any Skillshare user. They're looking for the Skillshare premium user because the customer they want to focus on, and that's under customer, is one that is an aspiring entrepreneur who's willing to pay or somebody who is a self-development seeker and the key activities finally that they'll perform is they will do um, some voiceover recordings of their classes then they will put together those voiceover recordings by creating slides as a second key activity and once that is uploaded then their third key activity would be marketing and promoting their material on Skillshare 
and beyond. So that's it. That is a chat and that is an example of how to use the chat. If you're new to my channel, please do me a solid and click the like button. I really appreciate it. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and every time we upload content, you'll get notified.